Hello, welcome to our Cisco CCST networking course. In this lesson, we're going to talk about basic switching concepts such as MAC address table, MAC address filtering, types of switches, switching protocols and technologies, and troubleshooting basic switching issues. So in today's digital age, networks are the backbone of modern communication systems. The smooth functioning of these networks requires an understanding of the basic switching concepts that underpin network communication. So switching is the process of directing data packets from one network segment to another. It is a critical function that determines the efficiency and effectiveness of network communication. Without a good understanding of switching, it is impossible to design, deploy, and maintain a network that meets the demands of modern communication. Switching involves the movement of data packets between different network segments, right, as defined earlier. There's actually several types of switches used in network communication or different types of switching techniques, I mean, right? So the first one is uh, circuit switching. So these networks use dedicated communication channels to transmit data. Circuit switching is commonly used in telephone networks where a dedicated circuit is established between two parties for the duration of the call. Next is uh, packet switching. So these networks divide data into packets and transmit them over the network. Packet switching is used in modern data networks like the internet. And third is message switch networks or message switching. These networks transmit data as a complete message. Message switching is used in older communication systems like telex networks. So here, right, switching is critical to a network communication because it determines how data packets are transmitted and received. The efficiency of the switch determines the speed of which data can be transmitted and the reliability of the network. In addition, the type of um, switching used determines the level of security, quality of service, and other features of the network. So here's a crit an important basic switching concept, which is the MAC address. I'm sure we've, you, you've, you've seen this in some of our topics, right, on, on this course, but let's review it here as this is a base, it's, a, it's an important uh, concept in, in switching. So MAC address tables, right? So here we talk about MAC addresses, and these are actually unique identifiers assigned to network devices, such as computers, printers, and servers. MAC address tables, on the other hand, are used by network switches to associate the MAC addresses with specific network ports, enabling the switch to forward data packets to the correct destination. MAC address tables, that looks this one, right, stores information about the MAC addresses of devices connected to the switch and their corresponding network port. When a data packet arrives at the switch, the switch checks its MAC address table to determine the destination of the packet and forwards the packet to the correct network port. So without MAC address tables, right, switches would not know which devices are connected to which network ports, resulting in network congestion, packet loss, and decreased network performance. MAC address tables also enable switches to segment network traffic by VLAN, ensuring that data packets are only forwarded to the devices in the same VLAN. This improves network security by preventing unauthorized access to network resources and enables administrators to control network traffic more effectively. So how switches learn and store MAC addresses? So switches learn MAC addresses by monitoring network traffic and recording the source. MAC addresses of devices that send data packets to the switch. When a data packet arrives at the switch, the switch checks its MAC address table to determine if it knows the destination MAC address. If the, nation MAC, if the destination MAC address is not in the MAC address table, the switch broadcasts the packet to all network ports when this is called uh, flooding, right? It sends it all to the ports. <laughs> So when a device responds to the broadcast packet, the switch records the MAC address of the device and associates it with the network port from which the packet was received. 
The switch updates its MAC address table accordingly, ensuring that future data packets destined for the device are forwarded to the correct network port. So here, right, so you have a PCA, let's say, yeah, with BNC, and all of these PCs have their own MAC address. Let's say this is MAC1, MAC2, and MAC3. So if this guy sends a message to B, right, um, it goes to the switch, then the switch will capture its MAC address, which is MAC1, and this port is configured, let's say, for VLAN 10. So that's Tagus VLAN 10. And this is port 1. So if it doesn't know MAC 2 yet, right? Let's say MAC number 2, the switch doesn't know it yet. It will uh, send the message to all of the ports, right? Um, then since B is connected to port 2, then port 2, um, this guy will respond back to the switch. Then the switch will... Uh, save or store that MAC address of B, which is MAC2, in the MAC address table. So that's how MAC addresses are, are being updated in the MAC address table. So MAC address tables also have a limited capacity and can store a finite number of uh, MAC address entries. Now, to prevent the MAC address table from becoming overloaded, switches use an aging process, right? to remove inactive MAC address entries from the table. The aging process involves assigning a TTL or time to leave value to each MAC address entry in the table. Now, when a MAC address entry is added to the table, the switch sets the TTL to a predefined value such as 300 seconds, right? So if the switch does not receive any data from the device associated with the MAC address within the TTL period, the switch removes the MAC address entry from the table. Oops, sorry. Now, MAC address entries can also be manually refreshed or cleared by network administrators. So refreshing the MAC address table ensures that the table contains up-to-date information about the devices connected to the switch, while clearing the table removes all the MAC address entries and forces the switch to relearn the MAC addresses of connected devices. So if you access a switch for you to look at the MAC address table, oh no, if you want to look at the, sorry, the aging timer, of the MAC address, you have to use this command, right? And this will actually show you the default uh, time to live of 300 seconds, okay? If you want to look at the number of MAC address, MAC addresses in the table, you can use this command on a Cisco switch. Show MAC address table count. Now let's talk about MAC address filtering. MAC address filtering is a network security technique used to control access to a network by allowing only specific devices to connect. MAC address filtering works by creating a list of approved MAC addresses and then allowing only devices with those MAC addresses to connect to the network. Devices with MAC addresses not approved, that is not on the approved list are denied access to the network. MAC address filtering is often used as a supplementary security measure in addition to other security protocols such as in Wi-Fi, WPA2, PSK, right, or in, P in pre-shared key, okay? So in this illustration, you can actually set this switch to deny uh, any device that will connect to port number two, but for port one, you can hard code which uh, MAC addresses will be allowed on the, by the switch, okay? Techniques for implementing MAC address filtering. Um, there are two primary techniques for implementing MAC address filtering. First is static MAC address filtering. The static MAC address filtering involves manually adding approved MAC addresses to a network device, such as a router or a switch. This technique is commonly used in small networks with a limited number of devices. Next is dynamic MAC address filtering. So it involves creating a dynamic list of approved MAC address based on the devices that are currently connected to the network. This technique is commonly used in larger networks with a higher number of devices. Now let's talk about security considerations and limitations. While MAC address filtering can improve network security, it is not foolproof and can, can be bypassed by determined attackers. Some of the security considerations and limitations of the MAC address filtering include MAC addresses can be spoofed, right? Means that MAC addresses can be easily spoofed by allowing attackers to impersonate approved devices and gain access to the network. 
Limitations on static MAC address filtering. Static MAC address filtering can be time consuming to set up and manage, particularly in larger networks with a high number of devices. It also requires manual updates to the list of approved MAC addresses whenever new devices are added to the network. Limitations of dynamic MAC address filtering. Dynamic MAC address filtering can result in a false in false positives where legitimate devices are denied access to uh, the network because their MAC address has not been added to the dynamic list. It can also result in false negatives where unauthorized devices are allowed access to the network because their MAC address has not been identified or unauthorized. Limited protection. Uh, MAC address filtering only protects against unauthorized access to the network and does not provide any protection against attacks that occur once a device has gained access to the network. And it can create a false sense of security. MAC address filtering can create a false sense of security and should be used in conjunction with other security protocols such as encryption and authentication protocols. So let, let's now talk about the types of switches. First is an unmanaged switch, switch. An unmanaged switch is a basic network switch that does not require any configuration. It operates using default settings and does not offer any advanced features. Unmanaged switches are typically used in small networks where simplicity is more important than customization or control. Next are managed switches. Managed switches offer advanced features and are configurable through a web-based interface, web-based interface or command line interface or dedicated software. Managed switches provide more control over network traffic and can be used to set up VLANs, prioritize network traffic and configure security settings. Third is that managed switches are typically used in larger networks where control and customization are necessary. The third type are smart switches. Smart switches are a combination of managed and unmanaged switches. They offer basic management features like VLAN support and quality of service or QoS, but do not offer the full range of configuration options available on managed switches. Smart switches are typically used in small, medium, small to medium-sized networks where some control over network traffic is needed, but advanced configuration options are not required. Let's talk about switching protocols and technologies. Switching protocols and technologies are critical components of network communication that determine the performance, stability, and reliability of network traffic. Here, we're gonna talk about in the important switching protocols and technologies such as STP or spanning tree protocol, RSTP, rapid spanning tree protocol, multiple spanning tree protocol, and link aggregation control protocol. So the first one is STP or spanning tree protocol. STP is used to prevent um, loops in network topologies by identifying and blocking redundant paths. STP ensures that there is only one active path between any two network devices, improving network stability and preventing packet loss. So as you will see here, right, you have a, a loop here, right? So you have switch A, B, and C, and they're all interconnected. If there's no STP, there's a possibility that uh, traffic can be, you know, just circulating between the switches, which will impact the performance of the switch. Actually, the CPU of the switches might go very high and will cause the other packets not to be processed by the switch, which will cause an outage, right? So what STP does is that instead of enabling traffic to be passing across all links, right? It can actually block one link. This is not this is not actually a physical blocking, right? It's not gonna shut down the port. But if you have like different VLANs here, let's say you have VLAN 10. So from VLAN 10 perspective, this will be blocked and no traffic will be forwarded on this path. So all traffic from A to B to C will just go on this path. It's not gonna go through this blocked uh, link, okay? So how does it work? STP works by electing a root bridge in the network, which acts as a central point of the network topology. Each switch in the network determines the shortest path to the root bridge and uses the path to forward data packets. Now, in the event of a link failure, STP will 
reconfigure the network topology to ensure that there's only one active path between any two network devices. So for example, if this link goes down, right, this port or link which was previously blocked will go to forwarding. So this will be down, but the traffic will just go here on the other side. Okay. However, STP can be slow to converge in large networks, which can result in network downtime and decreased performance. Okay. So, well, to address that slow convergence, um, Rapid Tree Protocol or Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, RSTP, was developed. Then let's talk about RSTP on the next slide. So RSTP provides faster convergence times in the event of a network topology change. RSTP can detect and reconfigure the network topology in millisecond, right? Improving network performance and stability. RSTP achieves faster convergence times by using different approach to network topology configuration. RSTP creates a backup path for each active path. So if a link fails, the network can switch to the backup path almost instantly. RSTP also eliminates the need for the listening and learning phases used by STP, further reducing deconvergence times. Let's talk about MSTP. So multiple spanning tree protocol is actually an extension of RSTP that allows multiple VLANs right, um, to be mapped to a single spanning tree instance and thereby reducing the number of spanning tree instances required and simplifying network management. MSTP enables administrators to configure multiple stamped spanning tree instances on a single network with each instance supporting a different VLAN. This reduces the number of spanning tree instances required and in simplifying network management and reducing the complexity of network topology. MSTP achieves this by mapping VLANs to specific spanning tree instances rather than creating a uh, separate spanning tree instance for each VLAN. This reduces the amount of overhead required for spanning tree configuration and improves network performance. Next is LACP or Link Aggregation Protocol. So Link Aggregation Protocol is a protocol used to combine multiple physical links into a single logical link to increase bandwidth and improve network resilience. LACP enables the creation of link aggregation groups or lags, which provide redundancy and load balancing across multiple links. LACP provides redundancy or um, by ensuring that if one link fails, traffic can be rerouted through the remaining links in the lag. LACP also provides load balancing by distributing traffic across multiple links in the lag, increasing network bandwidth, and the improving network performance. So as you will see, right, you have a switch A and switch B, you have two links in between. So if it's not aggregated, right, what's going to happen is that STP will block one of the links. Otherwise, you're going to have a loop, right, if it's not, if it will, it will not block one of the link. Now, that's not going to be efficient, right, because Instead of, let's say you're running 100 MB here and you have 100 MB, so that's total of 200 MB throughput, right? So instead of running 200, but because it's blocked, so you can only utilize 100 MB, right? Only one link. So if you want to use both links running a 200 Mbps, you can just bundle them. So logically, they will be uh, just one interface from the perspective of the switches, but physically, these are two uh interfaces from the switch okay so this is uh link aggregation control protocol all right now let's talk about troubleshooting basic switching issues so switching again is a critical component of network communication right and any issues with switching can result in um, degraded network performance connectivity issues or even network downtime so here, we're going to talk about the common switching problems, what are the diagnostic tools and techniques, and steps for resolving switching issues. So switching issues can arise due to a variety of factors, such as faulty hardware, misconfiguration, and network congestion. Here are some of the most common switching problems. First, slow network performance. So sl slow network performance can be caused by network congestion outdated hardware or misconfigured network settings. 
Next, next is packet loss. Packet loss occurs when the data packet fails to reach their intended destination. Packet loss can be caused by network congestion as well, faulty hardware, and misconfigured settings. Third is connectivity issues. Connectivity issues can occur when devices fail to connect to the network or are unable to communicate with other devices on the network. Connectivity issues can be caused by misconfigured network settings, faulty hardware, and also congestion. Next is network loops. They occur when there are multiple paths between network devices, resulting in redundant data transmission and network congestion. So when there are network loops, right, it's it's really bad because the switch or maybe STP is running crazy. It's not it's not able to to block a specific port or a specific link, which thereby causes the uh, switching loop within a network. If that happens, um, it's going to be a total outage, and that's going to impact all of the switches within the local air network. And the last one is VLAN misconfiguration. This occurs when VLANs are not configured properly, resulting in connectivity issues or network congestion. So the agnostic tools and techniques, so to troubleshoot switching issues, network administrators can use various diagnostic tools and techniques. Of course, we have ping and traceroute, right, to verify from the layer tree perspective, um, reachability from point A to point B. We can also use packet capture um, to capture and analyze network traffic to identify issues and anomalies. Packet capture can be used to diagnose issues such as packet loss or network congestion. You can also do an STP analysis or spanning tree protocol analysis. So it's a, it's a tool used to identify network loops and redundant paths in network topologies. STP analysis can be used to identify misconfigured network settings or hardware issues. And lastly is VLAN configuration verification. VLAN configuration verification is a network diagnostic tool used to verify VLAN configuration and ensure that the VLANs are configured properly. VLAN configuration verification can be used to diagnose connectivity issues or network congestion caused by VLAN misconfiguration. So how do we resolve um, switching issues? Um, to resolve switching issues, the network administrators can take the following steps. You can identify the root cause of the issue using diagnostic tools and techniques, and this involves determining whether the issue is caused by hardware, misconfigured network settings, or network congestion. First, you got to check the hardware components, right? For faults such as cables, switches, and network cards. Faulty hardware can cause network issues, and identifying and replacing faulty components can resolve the issue. Next is verify switch configurations like VLAN settings, link aggregation groups or port channels, spanning tree protocol settings, right? So because misconfigured network settings can cause network connectivity issues, network congestion, or other switching issues. Third is ensure that network congestion is not causing any performance issues. Network congestion can be caused by too much traffic on the network, and resolving congestion issues may involve redistributing network traffic or upgrading network components. And lastly is update switch firmware and drivers to ensure that they are up-to-date and functioning correctly. Outdated firmware or drivers can cause network issues and updating them can resolve the issue. Okay? All right, that's the end of the lesson. Here we spoke about what MAC address table is. We spoke about MAC address filtering, the types of switches, switching protocols and technologies, and troubleshooting basic switching issues. Okay, thank you very much for watching the video.